in the name of Allah, the gracious, the most merciful. Friends, I am here tonight to speak to your humanity and conscience. Imagine a father having to take his child to a hospital. This child is wounded. He is in a critical condition. He shows up to the hospital and they inform him that they're going to be performing the surgery with no anesthesia. Many of us have gone to dentists. Even with anesthesia, we feel pain and discomfort. Now imagine this father has to hold down his child while he undergoes the surgery. And in the middle of the surgery, the hospital loses electricity. The doctor says to the father, turn on your flashlight so that I can continue my surgery while he watches his child go through that pain. He does not know whether he's going to make it out of that hospital safely. Imagine for a moment that man who sat in the middle of the rebels. He lost his wife, he lost his children, he lost his home. Imagine for a moment that child who lost his parents. He was shivering from fear. Where does he go? What does he do? Imagine how many children have become orphans. How many mothers have lost their children? How many fathers have had to bury their children? This genocide continues every single day while the world leaders, the superpowers, the mainstream media is turning a blind eye while some of them are aiding and helping this genocide continue. The United States government vetoed a UN resolution for ceasefire. The United States that portrays itself as a peace-loving country announced over and over again that they do not support a ceasefire. Not only that, John Kirby today very clearly said that things are going to get worse, a lot worse, while there's going to be a ground invasion. All of this is done in the name of peace. My fellow Americans, we spend two billion dollars annually so that we can support animals who have no shelter, animals who have no homes. Yet, we're sitting idle, not doing anything, while we witness the mass murder an annihilation of an entire nation, while two million people have lost their homes. How? How can we enjoy a meal? How can we enjoy drinking water? How can we enjoy the comfort of our homes? While two million people have become homeless. Not only that, but the Biden administration decides to gift Bibi's army. A man who is addicted, this is according to his own people. He is addicted to occupation. He is addicted to genocide. We gift him with $14 billion. 
instead of being agents of peace, instead of being a country that goes to that region to build schools, to build hospitals, to build roads, to build homes. We give $14 billion to fuel a war which can lead to tens of thousands of people dying. You know what makes a nation great? My dear friends, what makes a nation great is if they were to prioritize humanity, if they were to prioritize peace, if they were to be colorblind towards who is being murdered and who, whoever is being killed, regardless of who they are. We're meant to rise to the occasion and we, meant, we are meant to speak against injustice and tyranny. The collective message of all prophets of God, the collective message of the Abrahamic faith is to stand against oppression it is a crime according to all religions to kill civilians. It is a crime according to all religions to kill the woman and the elderly and children, to bomb hospitals, houses of worship, mosques and churches have been destroyed every single day. Places which are meant to be a safe haven for people. I'd like to remind you all of the Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. What was he escaping? He was escaping prosecution. He was escaping mass murder with the children of Israel. Some of them, they did not even believe in him. Yet that did not stop him from helping them escape that did not stop him from seeking justice for them. Similarly, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when he created the Medina Accord, he ensured amnesty and protection for everyone, Jews, specifically the Jews of Medina, the Christians, and even the non-believers, the commander of the faithful, Imam Ali alayhi salam writes to one of his governors of how he's ought to treat minorities. He says to them, he says to him, and allow yourself, allow your heart to feel compassion towards your subjects. For they are either your brethren in faith or your equals in humanity. And the religion of Islam is very clear, brothers and sisters that we must rise to the occasion and we must speak against injustice. Even if that injustice were taking place against our own enemies. That is why you will find that true believers, true Muslims, those who believe in God, I don't care what their religion is, spoke against tyrants such as Saddam, Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, Taliban. And once again, as Muslims, we cannot remain silent in those moments. And it is a misconception that many people believe Muslims are anti-Semitic. Muslims hate the Jews. That is not the case. Let me share with you some examples from history where Muslims have actually been the only source of protection for the Jewish community. While the Spanish Emperor Ferdinand and his 
wife Isabel, and a decree forced all the Jews to either convert to Christianity or be expelled from their kingdom. Bayazid II, the Ottoman Sultan, writes to all his governors that this is the time for you to welcome the Jewish community, give them amnesty, give them peace. During the Second World War, in the midst of the Nazi occupation and the prosecution of the Jewish community, a man by the name of Abdul Hussein Sardar, the Iranian ambassador to France, gave as many citizenships to Jews as he possibly could while putting his own life in danger so that they can escape the Nazi occupation. Abbas, Shah Abbas I, the Safawi king, while Jews were being prosecuted in their homelands, gave them amnesty and he invited them and welcomed them to his capital city, Asfahan, and he created a village for them by the name of Julfa, the Fatimi dynasty's ruler, Al Hakim has a very famous encounter with a Jewish rabbi, Yaqub bin Kilis. His story is mentioned in the books of history, that he approached the Muslim Sultan, the Muslim king of the Fatimi dynasty, and he told them that here we are being mistreated. We're seen as second-class citizens. Some people disrespect us in your land. He not only made him an advisor, but he made him a liaison between him and the Jewish minority in his kingdom. I want to tell the resilient men and women in Palestine that you are not alone. Maybe the superpowers of the world have neglected you. You don't have water. You don't have electricity, you don't have safety, but Allah is with you. Allah has a witness. And I want to remind the world of the story of the Prophet Moses. When he was escaping with his people, the children of Israel, they hit a dead end, and that was the Red Sea. The children of Israel were extremely frightened for the right reasons. Pharaoh at the time resembled the greatest superpower, the greatest army. And he was coming with all of his might and power to annihilate Moses and his people. History tells us that the ground was shaking underneath them while Pharaoh and his troops were approaching. So they went to Moses, peace be upon him. And they said to him, Moses, are you not afraid? We're all scared. What's going to happen to us? And Moses smiled. And he said, I am not afraid. For Allah is with me. Allah has a witness to us. Moments later, Allah saved Moses and his people and there was eminent destruction that befell the oppressor Pharaoh. However, God saved his body so that he becomes an example for all the Pharaohs until the end of time. Let us gather our hearts and our souls wherever we are around the world tonight to remember, to eulogize the 6,000 souls that have, been, that have perished. 
the 2,500 children that have been murdered. Let us ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to send His support to the Palestinian people. Let us recite Surah Al Mubarakat Al Fatiha for all the souls of those martyrs. A'udhu Billahi min ash shaytan ar rajim. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar Rahman ar Rahim. مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله